Hello, I'm David Schindler and welcome to Learning to Leap and our continuing series of interviews with interesting people in the jobs, careers and employability space. Today it's my pleasure to welcome Julie Bishop uh, from uh, Job Hop, also known as Job Hop Julie, I believe. That's correct, yes, Excellent. Job Hop Julie they call me. She's a social recruitment uh, expert and um, a, a, a warm welcome to you, Julie. Thank you, David, and thank you for inviting me today. Brilliant. Um, maybe kick off to start with with a little bit about you and how you got into your business and social recruiting. Absolutely. Okay, so um, I used to have uh, a couple of businesses before Job Hop. So with my last business, I was looking to employ somebody on the franchising side because we were franchising uh, across the UK. And uh, I went to the recruitment agencies and uh, I wasn't getting any luck uh, using them. They were sending me the wrong people. So uh, I decided to just tap into profiles online. And uh, uh, as I was doing that, I realized the huge potential of being able to reach out to uh, candidates that were working at my competitors. And uh, these, these weren't active job seekers. Um, and with that, uh, the penny dropped. I thought, wow, if we could just turn recruiting upside down on its head a little bit and actually get employers and candidates to uh, connect directly online with each other mm. and communicate with each other and make employment human, everything would be a lot easier than having to rely on uh, the middleman. So that's where the whole idea started from. And uh, with, with that, uh, I eventually sold uh, that business that I was in when I was franchising it and uh, just go off and concentrate on job hop and be social. So I wanted to mm. understand social. Uh, and then from that, you know, job hop has, has, has changed path. Because at the time, it was, it was a, a platform, it was going to be a platform that uh, many, many, many people could use. Uh, but as it's grown, I've realized it's more of a platform now for young digital talent looking to get into uh, businesses and employers that understand social to attract great talents. Brilliant. So how long has job hop been going? So uh, I sold my last business in uh, 2010 and really sort of uh, had a year out uh studying I would say it was it was like a complete year out learning absorbing mm. and taking everything in so really uh sort of 2012 we started uh, uh creating the platform and then uh it wasn't though till last year that we we realized that the platform we had uh wasn't working in the way that we thought it should work. The user experience wasn't how we wanted it to be. So we went back to the drawing board and uh, rebranded and um, created something that we feel happy with, but it's completely evolving every day, as you know, social media sites do. So just to explain to us a little bit about this concept of job hopping. Yes, okay. Um, when I first thought this platform is going to be uh, about job hopping and uh, we're going to call it jobhop.co.uk. Uh, I had many people raise their eyebrows. It's like, oh, frowned upon, you know, job hopping. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not the done thing. Um, people uh, should stay in their jobs forever. But I had a different, completely different idea about that. I was, I, I used to, um, well, I still do, think that people that stay in their jobs forever um, are, are stagnate and uh, they're not uh, bouncing with ideas and bouncing with energy. So to me, I would, I personally wouldn't want somebody staying in a job forever. Um, and the market uh, with, uh, at that particular time, the, the, there wasn't job security mm. anymore. Job security had completely gone. So for trying to lead people to believe that um, there were jobs uh, for life, was uh, uh, completely wrong because that wasn't the case anymore. And what now with our younger generation, um, the average lifespan of a job uh, is three to four years because, you know, they uh, want to experience a lot quickly. Uh, they want to climb the career ladder quickly. Um, they want to um, uh, build their connections quickly. So to be able to do that, um, they will job hop. Now, still I get uh, people say, well, that, that's, 
can be a negative thing. However, I say to companies, if you understand that is the mindset of uh, a young person these days, that they will job hop, then you've got to encourage them to job hop within your own organization. Mm -hmm. So instead of keeping them within one job role for long, long, long time, we need to get them to experience other parts, other departments, maybe not job hop up, it may be job hop sideways, but we need to be able to keep them being able to job hop, to gain experience, to gain knowledge, uh, to get different types of training, to gain more connections. And if you really, really value that person within your organisation, you will allow that to happen within the company. So what's been the response from employers? I mean, have they kind of gone, thrown their hands up in the air and gone, no, 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 we need com committed employees and we need to retain them, otherwise we're spending all this money on them, investing in their development, and then they walk away. What's been the yeah, response? Yeah, I mean, when, when I speak to companies, and uh, uh, I, I will say to them, you know, if you have a brilliant company culture, if you have your employees on board, they understand the mission, they all work in towards the same mission and they understand the vision of the organization, then that is how you retain your, your employees. Um, and it's up to the company to really understand their company culture. Um, it, it, it is a huge education at the moment for many businesses um, to, to understand that our young generation of uh, active and passive job seekers uh, are not necessarily just turned on by money. They are yeah. turned on by company culture, mission, vision. Ethics is a huge one, yeah. the ethics of the organization. And this is what companies now have to offer, uh, have to offer candidates. Uh, it's not just about the Christmas bonus anymore. It's yeah. so much more. So are you seeing a shift from it being a sort of a... Uh, a seller's market, if you like, from the employers to a buyer's market from the candidate? Uh, where digital talent is uh, concerned, yes, I believe so, because there's a huge shortage. Um, it was uh, mm. O2 done uh, uh, research or study into uh, the shortage in the dig digital skills. And um, across the UK, by 2017, they reckon 750,000 jobs will be unfilled because we haven't got the digital skills. Mm. So um, companies have to make themselves attractive to attract the digital talent. And each company needs digital talent to propel their businesses because uh, in this era of uh, technology and fast communication with social media, um, they need they need that talent within within their organisation. So they have to be attracting it. So you get a lot of surveys saying, you know, uh, we want, or even in job adverts and profile, we want committed people to join our organisation. What do you think that means these days? Okay. I, I mean, if... If it was myself and I was um, uh, looking for somebody, one I would, and I do say this to, to companies, they need to hire for culture first. Um, the skills can come second. I would be looking for an agile employee, somebody mm. that is uh, able to adapt to change quickly, that is able to uh, 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 run um, run fast within the organisation and uh, move to department to department when needed. Um Committed, I think that lays with the company because the company has to be committed to the employee mm. to get that commitment back. So they have to understand that. So if they're saying they wanted to uh, want a, co a committed employee, what is their employer promise? What is their, their uh, employer promise going to be to the candidate for them to be committed in the first place? Yeah, much more of a two-way process. Then. Absolutely, yes. And I think companies are beginning to understand that, but for a very, very long time, it, it, that hasn't been the case. Yeah, absolutely. So just sort of going back to the sort of flavour of social and everything, why, why, does, why does social recruitment matter so much? You know, I, I still meet lots and lots of people who, um, you know, social uh, is, is a bubble and there's a number, it's a minority sport for a lot of people and all these other people are not touching it at all, but... What, what's your view about social recruiting today? Okay, so um, social social media is just a, a way we communicate. Um, so technology is changing uh, how we communicate. We can communicate different. We communicate a lot faster. We communicate using all these channels. But 
I believe where uh, a big change is, is with um, the companies really adopting social and understanding social, not just having somebody in the marketing person, mm. in the marketing team, like one person because they, they know how to do Facebook or they know how to do Twitter. It's about having the whole organization understanding social and being wanting to be part of social. So everybody within the company can do their part about spreading the message for them. So I, I, be, I believe that it's not until each organization truly understands the power of social and grasps that they need to educate all their employees, not just one person in the mm. market, marketing team. It's like training one person in the customer service yeah, team. Yeah, on customer everybody, service. Yeah, <laughs> everybody needs to understand customer service and everybody un- needs to understand social. So um, companies really do need to get their head around that. So in and effect, that's you, where the change will happen. What you're saying is that it's, a, it's an employability capability for everybody inside an organisation. Absolutely, yes, because I believe, um, you know, if if uh, you let the social flow, employee advocacy will grow. Absolutely, that, mm. is, that is what will happen. And um, when employees are encouraged to be social uh, and going back to the basics, everything is right in that organisation because uh, you'll, you'll probably know, David, as well, you know, you get companies that all of a sudden hear that Twitter and Facebook's mm. doing great for their competitor and um, you go into the organisation and they haven't got the foundations right. You know, everybody's disgruntled. Mm. Uh, people are, are, are moaning and negative, but they think that Twitter's going to solve all of that for them and they're going to get, you know, great candidates and more customers because now they're using Twitter. So, um they, they have to get the foundations right. Once the foundations are right and people love working there, what do they do next? They want to tell everybody else. When they tell everybody else what wonderful place it is to work at, then other people want to go. It's a bit like the Google effect. Everybody wants to work at Google because everybody hears what a wonderful place it is. So again, it's, it's not just about the technology, the tools, uh, the, the mechanics of it. It's about the culture and about having the right uh, sort of foundations for that, for it to grow and to people to use it appropriately and effectively. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Brilliant. Well, once they get the culture right, then, um, you know, they will naturally attract uh, great talent to the organisation. Brilliant. So what, just sort of look at it from the sort of uh, candidate side and the applicant side. What, what are some of the things that people bring to you and some of the common challenges and issues that they bring regarding uh, how, how to get jobs using show, social? Oh, right. OK, then. So from a, a, a candidate's point of view, um, I do have uh, many candidates will say that they want a job. They're not quite sure what type of job that they want, but they want a job. So one of the things that we have to do is really drill down, really focus on who it is they want to work for, uh, what it is that really drives them, what they're passionate about, what could they do every day even if they didn't get paid for it. Because until they understand that, they cannot go on social media, on the platforms and just say, I want a job, because they will not get heard because the internet is so huge mm. but if somebody went on there and says you know this is this is what I'm passionate about I love this particular company or a company company similar to that you know then people start hearing them They're like, oh okay I can put you in touch with so-and-so who knows somebody that works at there they may be able to help you so um that that is one of the the common things that many many young job seekers will just say I'm not quite sure what it is that I want to do, but I know I just want a job. So we have to drill right down and find out, you know, what really excites them and what companies excite them. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty similar with uh, the old fashioned CV in some respects. And people start with a CV rather than doing the thinking before, which they need to be able to do. So um, in starting to engage people in a conversation, showing interest into into different areas of, uh, of industry or business, as well as um, the actual people involved in these organisations. So what, what's, um, what are some of the sort of um, tips and ideas you have that, that help people to sort of get, you know, get that process going? So is this for the candidates yeah. or for the employers? From your candidate um, point of view. Okay, so I would say, apart from uh, drilling down, I would uh, uh, get candidates to look at who they know already. 
within their, their networks. So we're assuming that somebody is actually using social media because, you know, that there are still some young job seekers out there that don't use social media. I've come across two or three. <laughs> that's, that's quite amazing when you when you find them they go no we don't use any type of social media so assuming that they all use um social media we find out you know who they're connected to already because uh, a lot of the, a lot of the time it's their connections that will get them uh through the door uh, and they they don't even realize themselves that who they're connected to works at a, a company that they're interested mm. in so um looking at that um, getting them to understand how to market themselves online. Um, it's not just about job seeking. It's, it's about uh, a- attracting employers to them. So very much like when we show employers how to attract great talent to the organizations, we are showing uh, job seekers how to attract um, uh, great companies, great employers to them by uh, blogging, by um, tweeting, by videoing, etc. So they're continuously marketing themselves. And that's not just for the active job seeker. So we're saying to anybody who's employed that they can stay uh, on the market uh, as a passive job seeker because they can continuously market themselves. Yeah. Um, so we show them how to do that. So they 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 have the uh, shop window open all the time for uh, passing employers. Um, and once we get them understanding about marketing, and many of the um, young job seekers anyway uh, are doing stuff online, but they're not thinking it with employment in mind. Yes. So once they start thinking with employment in mind, it's like, ah, oh, okay, I get it now. The penny drops. So there's something about building that uh, professional identity and reputation online yes. uh, as, a, as an ongoing habit. Yes, yes. And it's funny you say reputation because when I go into schools, um, uh, social media really isn't um, taught in school. So mm. I'll, I will go in and uh, we'll have a discussion and then we will talk about digital dirt. So say we're talking to 15, 16 mm. year olds, we'll talk about digital dirt and you can see all the shock on their faces when they realise actually they've posted photos like that <laughs> on Facebook, you know, and getting them to understand that, uh, okay, they're having a bit of fun now. However, when they leave and start looking for jobs and employers are looking at all this yeah. stuff that they've done and said. And, and it's still there. Well, it's still there, <laughs> yes. So, you know, we have to reach them young and say to them, uh, you know, we are in this uh, world now where we are constantly marketing ourselves and reputation, um, it, it stands for a lot so they have to be thinking, you know, with their employment heads on. What do you think about um, uh, teaching social media in schools? I think they have to. I, I, I believe that um, uh, that's something that's desperately being missed. They're not empowering our students with social media. Mm. Um, many teachers are um, saying uh, no to social media because they only see the negatives of it or it's too too uh, hard too much hard work they don't understand it themselves to be able to help their students understand it so I really do believe that uh, uh, schools n- need this education to their students so they they are empowered with it and not and not worried about it and also it will help employers so when uh, our, our young students leave school if they if they understand all the positives of social media and they understand the negatives of social mm. media when they go into empl- employment yeah. you know it's there already they're not going to make a boo boo uh, and ruin a company brand because they've gone and tweeted something really bad because they've never been taught that yes. that was wrong yeah and that's again you know, readying young people for going into the workplace has got to happen yeah. at an earlier stage. Oh, yeah, and it, you know, right in now. the workplace, um, many companies they still don't understand social media, so they haven't got social media policies in place. They haven't got social media guidelines. They don't offer social media training. So you know, things do go wrong. It's a blind leading the blind sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> but at the same time, there's lots of good stuff going on, and I know lots of schools and stuff who do use social media and Twitter yes. and the tools appropriately. And then there are the downsides like bullying and harassment. Yeah. So again, you have to have the safeguards in place. But yeah, uh, interesting that one. And the other the other thing that I, that sort of sparks that thought is around um, a lot of the young people I work with 
do not know how to translate their capabilities, their talents and their strengths and put it across to employers. They don't know how to talk about themselves in a confident way and an articulate way. And yet, at the same time, social media, etc., is, is a natural uh, platform, if you like, an actual format for people to do that. What's, what's your experience of how people have used or could use social to put across their talents and their strengths? Yeah, okay. Well, I think, again, with uh, employers and uh, candidates, so I, I, I think with employers, they need to be looking at building communities. So if um, they're building communities mm. of uh, young possible candidates, um, they're, they're building relationships with them. If they're building relationships with these young possible candidates, then they will feel uh, 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 more confident in asking that employer questions on Twitter. Yeah. So, for instance, they could um, the employer could have like a, a tweet chat uh, mm. um, uh, once every week, so where possible candidates could ask the employer questions about what it's like to work at that company and um, you know get an insight to that organization it doesn't have to be on Twitter they could uh, have a Facebook group that could be advertised and people can join the group mm. so um, you know school leavers could be asking questions to the, the employers so it builds up their their conversation uh, their, uh, their communication confidence another thing I think companies um, do make the interview process quite daunting sometimes yes. So, especially for a, a young uh, school leaver. So, why don't companies be more transparent and put on perhaps YouTube, you know, the whole uh, interview process, what is going to be asked at the interview, how long the in interview lasts for. So then, th uh, the young job seeker can watch that and um, connect with the interviewer because that would be the interviewer yes. that's going to interview them. So, it just breaks down the barriers a bit. So again, they start to feel confident. It's not going to be super scary when they go for an interview. I think they, I think you're absolutely right. It's something about demystifying the process, but in absolutely. a language and a format yeah. that it resonates with with young people. Yeah, and I mean, so many young people are petrified of interviews. Yes. Why is that? It's because it's like it's been hidden behind a brick wall. You know, nobody really knows the interview yes. process. No, I think you're absolutely right. And there's also something about asking young people about how they would like the, that to be transparent because why why do we put barriers up to prevent or make it more difficult for yeah. young people to uh, access and get uh, and go through that process yeah I've, I uh, uh, heard of a company the other day I can't remember their name though which is a shame but um, they don't even sit at a desk at the interview so they put the interview process um, the questions that will be asked on video on YouTube and when somebody comes for an interview, they'll walk around the whole building. Mm. So they're, they're shown department by department. And everything that uh, uh, needs to be said is said during that walk. So there's nothing petrifying. They're casually asking the questions. Yeah. I thought that's brilliant. So get to see the whole company. The, it, the candidate in their mind is thinking, do I fit into this organization? Oh, that's where I'll be sitting if I get to work here. I thought it's a brilliant idea. Instead of, you know, the, the interview on one side of the desk and the poor candidate on the other side of the desk. I think, like petrified. I think you're absolutely right. I, mean, I, I know somebody who went for two job interviews in a day, which is quite challenging. Yes. And one interviewer had a kind of clipboard and was ticking off the boxes for the competency framework. Had they said this, had they said that. And the other one, you know, all they talked about was culture fit. And and the difference between those two was huge. It, it, it's, a, it's also about, do I want to join this organisation or not? It is. it is. Absolutely, David. I spoke to uh, one very talented young lady the other day, and she had three job offers given to her because she was just uh, amazing. And she went for the one that uh, her culture fitted, yes. the, you know, the personality fitted, the one with the best culture. And she said the other two jobs offered her more money. Exactly. But she went for the one that, you know, she knew had a brilliant culture. Brilliant. So, and that's what companies have to think of these days. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julia. And we're coming to the end of our, our interview. So I just wanted to, you know, have you got any, any final insider tips from your experience? You know, if there's one thing or two things you think more than anything else, I really wish that people knew more about that in terms of social. Okay. Um, I would say for employers to not continuously job push, because what tends to happen is they'll wait till a vacancy arises and then it's job push, job push, job push. Yeah. You know, you'll see the job being spammed out on Twitter. 
I would love it if they if they just thought ahead and started building communities where they are engaging and building relationships. Yes. Because that will work. Because when they need that web developer for uh, their expansion, then they've got community where they can just cherry pick and invite that web developer along for a chat and an interview. Um, so, yeah, my uh, tip would be for employers not to be job pushing, but thinking communities and engaging and building relationships. It will work for them. And for the job seekers, um, I would say clean up your digital dirt if you've got any out there, because employers will check what what you do online before you're invited along to an interview. And um, learn how to market yourselves. Also, keep upskilling, you know, find out what the company requires and uh, what type of uh, skills they require and just keep training yourself. There's so many um, free courses online uh, to continuously learn. So young young job seekers mm. should just keep continuously learning. Take that knowledge in. It's, it's out there for free to do it. Brilliant. Great tips. Thank you very much for that. And I also, I believe you've uh, you've written an ebook called The Social Job Seeker. Do you want to yes. just yes. tell people so where they can get that? And yeah, The Social Job Seeker it just gives loads of tips and advice for uh, uh, job seekers to get in front of employers uh, and how to market themselves online to get that job. And you can get it on Amazon. So uh, go to Amazon, tap in the, the Social Job Seeker and uh, it will come up and uh, you can get it. It's only one ninety nine. so... Um, I've made it very cheap for uh, job seekers, so they, they haven't got an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how can people contact you, Julie? Uh, Twitter, so yes. at JobHopJulie. Do come and uh, tweet with me on uh, Twitter. Uh, the website's jobhop.co.uk, uh, but Twitter's usually um, where I do all the chatting, so uh, do, do connect with me on there. If you do still use email, um, you can uh, email me julie at jobhop.co.uk brilliant and I thoroughly recommend your blogs which are which are really good thank you brilliant um, thank you very much indeed uh, for today and uh, uh, look forward to speaking to you again thank you David it's been good